What's up, YouTube? Thank you for tuning in again. Um, this video is going to be a little different format than we're used to. Um, today we're going to be going over the engine management that we selected to use for the Super Beetle and kind of our strategy moving forward with it. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to do a huge shoot, shout out to all of you. Um, I really appreciate the support. As of today, we finally hit a thousand subscribers. Um, we've been making videos for about 10 months, I want to say. Um, and it's just a really big deal. I really appreciate all the support. Um, and this also helps motivate us for some more projects, some bigger things, uh, which we'll get into later in the video. But for this video specifically, we're going to be talking about the engine management system that I selected. And uh, again, another huge shout out needs to be made, but this is for DIY Auto-Tune. Um, when I had a, probably only about 50 subscribers, I reached out to them, kind of poking around to see if they wanted to do some kind of partnership and sponsorship. And to my surprise, they were all for it. And uh, they were very helpful with picking out what I needed. Um, and they definitely hooked me up with a good deal with all the stuff that I required. Um, so we're gonna go through what I selected, um, my intentions for use, and try to just kind of give everyone an idea of what the next step would be when you're going from a carbureted motor to a fuel injected motor. Um, you don't necessarily need to do everything I'm doing. Uh, you could go with just a fuel only system and uh, the Mega Squirt will support that. Um, but we'll get into all that as we go a little further. The first thing I want to show you is just what was included in um, the package that I received. Uh, so right here is basically everything I received from, Meg, uh, from DIY Autotune. After working with their tech department, I went ahead with the MS3 Pro Evo kit and the uh, Universal Harness, which I think is going to be really good for my application. So um, if you were to go the path I'm going, it's going to cost you about $1,500, which is very in line with pretty much all of the aftermarket computers that are researched. Um, what I really liked about DIY Autotune and the Mega Squirt uh, MS3 Pro and all kind of all their offerings is it's very much tailored to the DIY market, which is uh, that's us. So so I'm really happy about that. And again, like I already mentioned, they were very supportive. And so for $1,500, um, when you get the MS3 Pro Evo kit with the universal harness, um, this is more or less what you're going to be going with. Again, you can kind of tinker with some things, but uh, uh, this is what I ended up with. So they were nice enough to send us out a bunch of stickers and some swag and stuff like that, which we'll, we'll set up in the garage and possibly at least there are one or two on the actual Beetle. Um, but what you can see here, what you need with most tuning systems, um, so this is no different, is you're going to need an oxygen sensor. Um, and so the way Mega, sorry, the way DIY Autotune does this is they really want you to send a, uh, purchase the kit through Innovate. So I purchased the MTX-AL, and what essentially this is, is this is an O2 sensor, and it also comes with an O2 gauge, which is really helpful because I currently don't have one, so we'll make sure we mount that up in the car. And it also comes with a bong so that we can put it into the exhaust pipe which is going to be something new for us, but it needs to be done, and it's going to be a really good learning experience, so we're all for that. So that's kind of the first part here, and we have some, uh, what looks like some data cables and um, some tuning cables. So that's kind of one aspect of the system. That's definitely not the main part, but for any EFI tuning, you need the O2 sensor so that you can actually tell what your air-to-fuel ratios are, because um, that's really what's going to drive your power and your reliability. Um, too far on either end and you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So we have our oxygen sensor and then here we actually have the main computer. As you can see this is the MS3 Pro Evo. Um, I believe AMP EFI is another partner with DIY Autotune. I'm not really sure so I apologize if I'm not accurate with that description. But essentially in here you have the main brain, the actual computer. And you can see here I actually I've opened the box but I really haven't gone through a lot of this because I wanted to do it with the group. So I believe this is uh, a USB that they send with it for setting up the device. Um, not exactly sure, but luckily they have really good support, so I'm going to be figuring out all this with their team as well. Um, they also give a really nice little cut wiring uh, layout, so you know a schematic, I guess, or a pinout. So you, uh, real quick, I could probably keep this in the glove box if I wanted to. Well, I don't have a glove box, but I could keep this in the car if I wanted to. And this really gives you everything that you need to... Uh, at least as a shortcut to wiring. Now, this isn't schematics, but it does tell you what each wire is pinned to, so that's really helpful. Um, and then we have the actual computer here, which as you see, hasn't even been removed from the wrap yet, so... 
seems like now is the right time. Ooh, and she is beautiful. I believe this is an IP65 rated container. So, uh, because I'm a nerd, I'm an engineer, IP65 is essentially your dust and water protection. 65 is very good. This is made to be put in a, it, this could essentially, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say you'd want to put it in a splash zone, but it's going to do very well with dust and water protection. It, it'll have no issues in a kick panel in your car. Um, I believe they, you could also put this under the hood. Um, not my intention, so I'm not exactly sure on that, but uh, it's definitely it's definitely got all the bells and whistles as far as an enclosure is concerned. Uh, you can see all these covers for when you're not using certain ports. Um, very nice, thick, it looks like it's powder coated. Um, we have the port here for our uh, pressure, uh, for our map sensor, because it has an internal map sensor. Um, it, it's just overall a really nice, sturdy, solid unit, and as you can see here, Made in the USA, so we always like to support local business. I believe uh, DIY AutoTune is almost exclusively based in Georgia. Um, so yeah, always want to support support our local home businesses. We'll just put that back away. That's kind of everything that comes with the computer uh, module, I guess you would call it. Just box and we have our harnesses. So, there's a couple different ones, and honestly, I do not know. I haven't had a chance to really go through here and can tell you what each of them are. What's really nice is in the harnesses, each wire is actually labeled. Right here, I can see analog in. I can see high, current, out. Um, I believe they even have ones labeled, let's see, injector out. Uh, so, so these will match up, I believe. These will match up with the card, so we have a really good idea of what each wire does. And it's really nice when wires are labeled like this, because I believe in any section of the wire, say you were to cut it, splice it back, maybe you need to splice in somewhere midway, these identif identifiers are, are printed throughout the wire. So that's also really useful um, for DIY and, you know, for someone who like, like me who's not really an electrician um, or an electronics expert. But as you can see, this is everything we received in this $1,500 package, and this is everything we would need to take, in my instance, a Subaru motor, but really to take most cars um, from carburetor to fuel injected or to just switch over to a fully standalone computer. Um, and that's why I was really, really supportive of this. What's also is cool um, is, and we'll get into this a little bit later, but the MS3 Pro, the way it's set up, you can actually have multiple tunes in there. So, if I really wanted to, I could get more harnesses for different cars, and I could actually move the computer between cars. Someone like me who's really on a budget and trying to do multiple projects at once, they, there is that possibility. And, and that's pretty similar with other computers, uh, aftermarket com car computers as well. So now that we've really had a chance to see what's in the box and kind of understand the different components the kits come, through, come with, uh, I really just wanted to go through, and again, I'm not going to go through all the technical specifications because honestly, um, me included, and I'm sure a lot of the viewers, a lot of these things are kind of going to be mumbo jumbo, and that's fine. Um, you know, this is all going to be a learning experience. I've never tuned a car before, but I'm not afraid to. This is something that uh, it's going to be really fun. You know, we may have some issues along the way, but that's all the learning experience. But for me, um, some of the big features that I really liked, and I had to write stuff down just because. Um, I don't usually do things like this as far as, you know, direct presentation with you guys. It's usually more based around what my current project is. Um, so I just took some notes on what the really cool features that I like about this product are. Um, some of them are unique, some of them are universal across the markets. Uh, but either way, this is kind of what I think is really valuable in a, in a standalone computer. And uh, what makes the MS3 Pro Evo particularly, uh, particularly awesome, to be real. Uh, so, so for, as far as tuning, everything's uh, VE, which is volumetric efficiency base. Uh, so that's really cool because it gives you a lot of different options for how you set up your tune. Um, what's really common in the path I'll probably go down is speed density. Uh, I've read a lot about this in the Subaru community back when I owned uh, my Forester XT. Um, people doing conversions to speed density. Um, but you can also do alpha N or you can even just do something math based, which is um, it, it also very common. But for me personally, I think we're going to go on the path of speed density because um, from my understanding, it's very flexible um, and that's definitely what we're looking for. Uh, as far as some other features, uh, you know, you can set up boost control. Uh, if you have a, what they call a, 
I want to say a decoder ring. Basically, if you have a, a sensor set up with your t tire so that you can actually measure wheel speed, um, uh, you'd actually be able to set up traction control so the car would be able to tell if tires are slipping um, and adjust the tune accordingly. Uh, what The other things that we can do with this is meth injection, which is something I've been considering. Uh, what you guys will see in our turbo video, which is coming out in probably the next week, is getting the stock intercooler in this car uh, I should say the stock STI intercooler, which is an air-to-air -air intercooler. Uh, it's a tight fit, and it, there's not necessarily going to be great airflow to it. Uh, we are going to use it now for the sake of having factory Subaru parts, but in the long run, something like meth injection may be a really good option. Uh, people consider it a chemical heat exchanger. Uh, I don't know all the science behind it, but I know you can essentially inject meth, <laughs> methanol into your uh, intake stream, and that will cool the charge the same way that an intercooler would. Uh, so that's really interesting. Uh, another cool option is flex fuel. Uh, we have E85 available down here in North Carolina. Um, my Crown Vic is actually a flex fuel vehicle. Um, as of now, we don't have the Subaru motor or the Beetle set up for flex fuel as far as a flex fuel sensor, but we did use Teflon lines universally throughout the car and anything other than the actual fuel injectors, which are Subaru um, factory, Everything else was planned to be able to be E85 ethanol compatible. Um, so it's really cool that the computer can also, if you incorporate a flex fuel sensor, you can start adjusting your tunes based on your ethanol content. Um, some other really cool features that it has is launch control and anti-lag. Uh, again, this is more for just hooning around than anything, but it is really cool to know that my little beetle could be set up with two-step or three-step. Um, anti-lag, launch control, all, all the fun things that, you know, race cars, rally cars. Uh, and, and also with regards to factory sensors, we'll be able to actually tie into our factory knock sensor, which is extremely useful. And uh, from what I understand in my research, with a aftermarket computer, um, a standalone computer, the knock control and knock sensing isn't always ideal. Um, but I have really high confidence in this unit and we do have a factory knock sensor on there. So we're definitely gonna try to incorporate it. Um, not only would you be able to sense knock, but you'd actually be able to have the, uh, you know, the motor would actually, or I should say the tune would actually adjust its parameters to either prevent the knock or go into a safety mode um, if the knock is excessive. The other thing that's often overlooked is actual data logging. This computer has a memory card on board. You can actually data log straight through the computer. Um, and that's huge, especially when you're first tuning, you're not always going to be able to watch every single parameter that you need to while you're going through your uh, driving instances. Um, so it's really nice that this can data log. You can go back, look at what happened, um, you know, check if your air fuel ratios are right, see if you had any knock events. Um, you know, just, just things that really basic things that you need for tuning, um, especially if you're not going to be on a dyno, which as of now, I have no intentions of using a dyno. I don't have access to one. Um, luckily, I have a lot of long, straight, unpopulated roads near me, so that's probably where most of my tuning is going to be done, right on the road. Um, so, yeah, so stuff like data logging is really important, especially when you're on your own or, you know, just when you want to be able to look at all the numbers afterwards. Uh, the other other feature that's really, really impressive with this is that it's uh, it has CAN support, C-A-N, CAN support, um, and that's kind of what's used in more modern vehicles, but what's really nice about this is that what, what they state is it pretty much gives you limitless numbers of inputs and outputs through the CAN bus system, and it also allows you to use those really cool dashes that have been coming out, um, the electronic dashes that are CAN based. Um, so that's really cool that this computer can work with those dashes. You know. So yeah, so where we go from here essentially, we have the computer, we have the wiring, and I have essentially all the factory Subaru sensors, mostly new, um, on the car. So in the next coming videos, uh, what we'll be showing you is essentially how I will go through wiring up this specific motor uh, with this specific standalone computer. And in a future video after that, we'll actually go through how I set up the tune and how we go through our kind of getting our base map set up and, uh, you know, getting the car started and at least able to move under its own power. Okay, so I know we said this at the beginning of the video, but I just can't overemphasize how appreciative I am of all the support we have right now. Um, it is huge that we reached that thousand subscriber mark. Um, and with that, we are going to try to actually grow our channel as a whole and our brand as a whole. Um, so. Not immediately, but uh, what we have in the works now is we're going to be working on a website um, with some merchandise. And we're all, we also, um, as a thank you to all of you for supporting us, uh, 
and you know, helping us grow, we have a secret 1,000 subscriber project in the works, um, and I don't want to talk too much about it, but what I can tell you is it is going to be very exciting. Um, it's going to be very different from the Beetle, um, and, it, and as far it's going to be very different from the Beetle as far as application and as far as time. We're hoping that uh, this will be a very quick, short project with a very high return. Um, so I want to. My goal is to film it maybe over the course of a couple weekends and release a series of videos. Um, and it's really just all a thank you for you guys. I know the Beetle stuff has been, uh, it's been interesting, but obviously it's, it's taking a while and I really want to get something exciting in front of all of you uh, and just really say thank you for the support because we really do appreciate it. Um, and also, we want to say thank you to DIY Autotune for the support because without them, um, it, it, you know, we'd be in a lot different situation as far as our aftermarket computer. And I'm not going to get too deep into it because, um, honestly, I know everyone's doing their part, but again, just everyone stay safe and healthy during this coronavirus pandemic. Um, it's a really strange time for everyone. I personally have been affected. I lost my job a few weeks ago. Uh, fortunately, I am doing contract work, so I'm not fully unemployed, but it was definitely a drastic change, um, and I wouldn't necessarily say for the better. Uh, but, you know, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. We have to stay optimistic. Um, do your part, stay home, work on your cars, work on your home projects, work on your relationships with your family. Just, you know, take this time for what it is. Uh, take care of yourself, take care of your loved ones. Um, and we're all gonna get through it on the other end. It, it's gonna be okay. All right, so I was just editing this to put it up tomorrow and I realized that I didn't film an outro. So once again, thank you everyone for viewing. Subscribe for more, hit the like button, make sure to follow us on Instagram, and hope to see you again soon.